if you're going to take over-the-counter omegas, a good rule of thumb is without the supervision of a physician, you don't want to take more than about two grams of EPA or DHA. I think one of the most popular supplements out there overall is fish oil, and omega-3s. So maybe we start by breaking down you know, the different omega-3s and then you know, talk about the different types of fish oil um, because there's EPA heavy, DHA heavy, um, and mm -hmm. fish oil is not completely risk-free. Uh, it does have a good safety profile, but not completely risk-free. So what are the different omega-3s? Can I just eat a bunch of ALA and get my omega-3 requirement in? Probably not. Um, the main ones that you're looking at in fish oil is EPA and DHA. DPA is also an omega-3. But usually you're looking at both the ratio and the absolute content of how much EPA and how much DHA. Um, they also have different risk profiles. For example, if you take usually a prenatal omega-3 is very high in DHA, which helps with neural development um, and is a good addition to most prenatal vitamins. And then often a omega-3, for example, like hypertriglyceridemia, the extreme example of being like pure EPA would be more for um, addressing high triglycerides and is potentially more of a blood thinner as well. Yeah, with the EPA in particular, that's the one that I see get a lot of attention. Um, EPA, like monotherapy, if you will, mm -hmm. um, looking at decreasing inflammation, improving um, depression. And in some studies, usually it has to be a fairly robust dose, like you know, four grams of EPA. Mm -hmm. um, but then as you pointed to, that's also where you see the risks start to occur. So it gives you the best cardiovascular risk reduction in terms of an omega-3. Um, if I'm looking at all the tools available to reduce cardiovascular risk, you know, fish oil is probably not the foundation of therapy, um, mm -hmm. but it can move things in the right direction. You do see some benefit in primary prevention in a couple of trials. There has been some controversy with the placebo, which was a mineral oil, which it's speculated may be harmful, but then other people have gone back and said, no, it's not harmful. Populations just get less healthy over time. Yeah. Um, so that's something I've been following I think is interesting. Um, and the DHA, we've looked at a study of this with um, head injuries in particular. Um, mm -hmm. Football players, um, neurofilament light chain, NFL. Um, this is actually, you know, not NFL football, but just a, a coincidence that happens sometimes in science we really like to see. Uh, but if you have someone um, supplementing with DHA at about a two gram dose, that appears to be the most effective for reducing markers of something like a head injury. Um, and this was done not in NFL players, but in university football players, uh, American football, that is. Mm -hmm. Other things that we like to make note of is we're a big fan of objective data. So get your omega check. There's omega checks in the serum and intracellular omega checks. So intracellular is more like an A1C where you can't study for the test to make your omegas look good. So get those and then dose accordingly. If you're going to take over-the-counter omegas, a good rule of thumb is without the supervision of a physician, you don't want to take more than about two grams of EPA or DHA. Um, it's not a strict cutoff, but after that, you might want to at least have a physician's oversight regarding the risk profile. There's also a couple different forms of over-the-counter omega-3s. Um, in general, it's a good idea to have a lower fish oil content that is not omega-3. It'll decrease things like belching, heartburn. Um, often the non-belching versions are just versions that have less um, inactive ingredient or inactive oil in it. And then furthermore, um, there's two main forms, triglyceride form and ethyl ester form. Um, there's not necessarily a superior form, but just keeping in mind the um, pharmacokinetics of anything attached to an ethyl ester is important. Yeah, and you'll hear that where people will present the triglyceride form as the only way to get your omega-3 index up. And it really just goes back to the objective data. So get your omega-3, ideally red blood cell index, so that you know with a little bit more, um, more correlation of what's going to be in the tissue levels. The red blood cell test seems to determine that, a little, or the red blood cell test seems to indicate that a little bit more than just what's floating around in the serum at a given time. If I go have salmon for dinner and check it the next day, that's, you know, as you mentioned, studying for the test. So I would expect to see the serum omega-3 index come back much higher than what is actually there. I think that's a pretty good summary of omega-3 supplementation.
Um, thousand foot view is yes, it's both prescribed and supplement. There's different forms, but at the end of the day, following objective data and finding what is best for your risk benefit profile. Yeah, I think that's a good summary. So like take home, who is this supplement potentially for? That's been studied in you know, depression, been studied in cardiovascular prevention. Um, one thing we didn't mention was it may have a little bit of an anti-catabolic effect in women. Um, so those are kind of the, you know, the target groups we look at. Um, and then we know that there is quite a bit of correlation with having a good omega-3 index and a good health span. Mm -hmm. Any other populations you think may specifically benefit from omega-3s or fish oil? Those populations which tend to run higher in triglycerides, some of this is just your genetics. Um, in addition, um, there is some types of fats that are known as fat burners, often omega-6s. Most people in developed countries don't need more omega-6s. Now there is some individuals, like um, some people just ov avoid all omega-6 intake. It's very difficult to do. But um, that's something to keep in mind is your ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s. Fortunately, your omega index calculates that for you. Yeah, I think those are great points. Mm -hmm.